Pastor Chris Oyakiromi in rebuke Obat Angel and Udmeje, who claim that they are the highest prophet on earth, that God gave it to them. They are the highest prophet on earth. Can you watch this video? You also watch video where Apostle Richard Kakim rebuke pastors that were fighting over uh, anointing. I'm the highest anointed, anointed man of God. Tap from this, tap from that. Watch this video. I'll be back. Thank you. You have in the church, you know, some of this teaching about um, uh, double anointing. Yes, prophet. I want a double portion of your spirit. It's so crazy. Double anointing, triple anointing, you know. And how that some people have more anointing than other people. Prophet Hubert Angel is the only prophet that I have tried and tested and I can tell you. You see someone prophesying? Take away from me. I do not care where you go. I'm the biggest stakeholder in the prophetic. On earth, even angels know it. When the Lord came to me and said, I'm sending you as a prophet to the what? To the entire earth. As a prophet to the last dispensation. So I know who I am. I don't need anybody to be arguing about it. Preachers are going there arguing about it. Is it correct? Is it right? Is it telling the truth? Whatever I remain the strongest spiritual man in the world. When it comes to practical power, I am the one. No one has ever done the kind of miracle I do. I have never done the miracle. I'm a major prophet. I'm in the business. There is no father of the prophetic. Nobody is father of prophetic. Those are man-made titles. Those are arrogance and pride. Nobody is father of prophetic. How old are you? How old are you? You say father of prophetic. How old are you? Nobody is father of prophetic. But some of us were prophesying, some people were still in school. But I'm not father of prophetic. I've been prophesying since 94. 30 years. I'm not father of the prophetic. The owner of the prophetic ministry is the father, which is God. God is the father of the prophetic ministry. None of us. Most of the people you call prophets are sorcerers. They are diviners. They are corrupt men. They are in the order of Balaam. Because they pursue gain. Gain. That, that's what they want. Gain. We have not had prophets from Southern Africa. We only have gifted men. Who can see the color of your singlet? The path God reveals to you is the sharpest path that God can reveal to you. The path God reveals to me is the sharpest path God can reveal to me. The only one that knows how to communicate to us best is the Holy Ghost. If he communicates to me with ABCD, that's what he knows I can understand. If he communicates to you with quadratic equation, then be taught you according to your faith. But in no way would the Holy Ghost say, okay, I'm showing you this so that you can prove to the people we know the Spirit is speaking. Can I tell you something? Yes, sir. It's not true. It's not biblical. It's not biblical. The, the place where they get that teaching from is this crazy idea about Elisha and Elijah. Because Elisha said to Elijah, give me, let a double portion of your spirit rest upon me. And they don't understand what that means. He wasn't asking for two times what you have. How can someone give you two times what he has? <laughs> Elisha was not a fool. Elisha was not a fool. He knew exactly what he was asking for. He wasn't asking for, give me two times the anointing on your life. <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't have asked such a stupid thing. Because Elijah couldn't give it to him. Now, of course, when, when he asked what he asked, Elijah did say, you have asked a hard thing. He didn't say an impossible thing, he said an, a, a hard thing. Now, if he meant give me twice what you have, he wouldn't say you have asked a hard thing. You say you asked an impossible thing. 
But because Elijah knew what Elisha was asking for, he said, you've asked a difficult thing. If you see me when I'm taken away, you got it. Uh oh. Now, why do people say that Elisha got twice the anointing of Elijah? How come it's not Elisha that's coming again? Why is it Elijah? Since Elijah has twice the anointing. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, because something is wrong with that understanding. The reason they say that Elisha had uh, double the anointing of Elijah is because they said they counted the number of miracles. Terrible. And that the number of miracles by Elisha was twice the number of miracles by Elijah. When did we start measuring the amount of anointing by the number of miracles? And even when the, I've asked them, how did they count their own? Because when you count it, it's not like that. It's not correct. They're wrong with the count. Most people who say that never counted. They heard somebody else say it. And they have written, I mean, they've, they've stated their case. They have never counted. You cannot measure the anointing on a man's life by the number of miracles. If you could count Elijah's own and count Elijah's own, what about those of us whose miracles you cannot count? So what happens to us? What I mean is the miracles are so many. They are so big and they are so many. So how are you going to measure us as to which anointing is more than the other? That is nonsense. Let me show you what Elijah was asking for. Deuteronomy chapter 21. Turn to verse 17. Let's start from verse 15. Follow this reading, you'll, you will understand. If a man have two wives, and one beloved and another hated. Let's say he, a man has two wives, he, he loves one, he hates the other. <laughs> and they have born him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son be has that was hated, if the, the wife that was hated has the firstborn son. Next verse. Then it shall be, when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. He must not put the son of the beloved one instead of the son of the hated, who is actually the firstborn. God is bringing what? Justice into family. Watch. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he, the father, has. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. This is what Elisha was asking for. I want to explain it to you. Let's look at it like this. Can I get six handsome men out here one two yes three four five six i've got six handsome men here thank you watch now imagine that these are six sons and the father wants to divide his inheritance so he says God is telling the man, divide the inheritance into seven places. So, if this is the first son, he gets two portions. Two. Then each one gets one, 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 one of the father's inheritance. 
this is the law of the double portion he says the right of the firstborn is his the right of the firstborn which means he becomes his father's representative at the passing of his father he takes the title are you following this now this is the law of the double portion so what Elijah was asking Elijah for was this Elijah was ahead of the school of prophets and if you had read the story all the prophets were aware by revelation that Elijah would be cut away but they didn't know exactly how and they were saying to Elijah uh, to Elisha are you aware that your master is living are you aware and you say don't disturb me I'm aware now all these prophets were watching who's gonna be the next point man of Israel who is gonna be the next head prophet who's gonna be the next leading prophet? they're not aware Elijah is leaving who is next who will take his place of leadership they didn't know who and now Elijah says to Elisha ask what you want before I'm taken away Elisha says let me have the right of the firstborn That means let me be the next man let me take your place and so elijah says you've asked a hard thing if you see me because it will take the eyes of that prophet to see me if you see me when i'm taken away you have it guess what happens the whirlwind of god came and took elijah away and elisha saw him and cried my father my father the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof and the mantle of Elijah fell and Elisha took it the other prophets did not see Elijah so when Elisha came they said let's look for your master we are looking for him where can we help you find him Elisha knew they didn't see him he was the only one who saw him So Elisha was asking for the right of the firstborn not for twice what Elijah had because the law of the double portion was for the father to divide what he had not what someone else had he said divide it into portions Elisha said a double portion a double part of your spirit a double part and this is the teaching of the scripture on the law of the double portion. The anointing has not finished in heaven. If God has given me my own, your own is there waiting for you. Just as Apostle Tarkham has said, the anointing has not finished in heaven. If God has given an anointing to his servant, he or she is just a motivation for you to go to Jesus and ask for your own anointing. But there is a stock of preachers and church members who feel that Jesus is not having the anointing for them. And what they do is just unimaginable. They visit the graves and tombs of the servants of God that carried an anointing from God and start sucking anointing from the corpse of the man or woman of God. That by itself is shocking and more of an occultic practice. It is even more disgusting when it is coming from a man like Pastor Benny Hinn, who is one of the earliest men of God to practice this grave-soaking thing. Here is what he said. One of the strangest experiences I had a few years ago visiting Amy's tomb in California. This Thursday I'm on TBN. Friday I'm going to go and visit Catherine Kuhlman's tomb. It's close by Amy's in Forest Lawn Cemetery. I've been there once already, and every so often I like to go and pay my respects because this great woman of God has touched my life. And the grave uh, where she's buried is closed. They built walls around it. You can't get in without a key, and I'm one of the very few people who can get in.
Pastor Benny Hinn gives us the reason for his quest of lying on the graves of Emmy and Catherine Kuhlman. He says that the tomb of Emmy is surrounded by seven feet angels who bow at Emmy's grave. And that to him is a reason for him to suck the anointing of Emmy. Listen to how he strangely puts it. But I'll never forget when I saw Amy's tomb. It's a incredibly dramatic. She was such a lady that her tomb has seven foot angels bowing on each side of the, the, her tomb with a gold chain around it. As, as incredible as it is that someone would die with angels bowing on each side of her grave, I felt a terrific anointing when I was there. I actually, I, I hear this, I trembled when I visited Amy's tomb. I was shaking all over, God sparked him all over me. As expected, Apostle Joshua Selman, who runs after anointings from men of God, must have craved the one Benny Hinn got from the graves. And here is what he said. There is no man on earth today who truly works in the healing ministry who ignores Benny Hinn. Because currently on earth now, he's not just a human being. He's the spiritual system that is responsible through partnership with the Holy Spirit for administering that grace. Although he recommends Benny Hinn as the custodian of the grace of healing and performing such related miracles, Benny Hinn confirms that he got part of his anointing, perhaps to perform miracles, after grave sucking on the tombs of Emmy and Catherine Kuhlman. These two evangelists were renowned for walking in outrageous miracles. But let us understand something here. What exactly is grave sucking or grave soaking? Grave sucking, also known as grave soaking or mantle grabbing, is the act of lying across the physical grave of a deceased preacher or evangelist for the purpose of pulling out the anointing of the Holy Spirit, an anointing that was purportedly trapped within the body upon the person's death. Grave soaking is based upon the belief that a Christian's anointing and filling of the Holy Spirit doesn't leave his body when he dies, and one can receive this person's anointing by lying on their grave and soaking it up. But here is the paradox. If grave sucking is based upon the idea that the anointing of an individual who has died may be reclaimed and used by another person, why will someone lie on the person's grave to tap their anointing instead of meeting Jesus Christ, who gave the dead person the anointing he or she was operating in? How else can we describe that if it is not necromancy? Apostle Tarkim has something about this tapping anointing madness. In the New Testament, you don't tap from anybody's anointing. That is why in the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came, he sat on each and every one. Holy Ghost did not sit on Peter, and Peter carry Andrew, James. No, the Bible says everyone got it. It's your turn to get your own. Stop being lazy. Pay the price. Walk in God. Put the flesh under subjection. Crave for it. He that is thirsty and hungry for righteousness, it shall be filled. That of your father can push you to get your own. He can train you to get your own. He can protect you to get your own. Are you understanding me? He's just a pattern. He's just a template. Go get your own. Say here. In some circumstances, the grave sucking is done by collecting the soil around the grave or any other thing or material around the grave so as to receive the anointing of the dead man or woman of God. Of course, that's not part of the acceptable practices in the kingdom of God. For Prophet Cobus to receive the anointing of William Branham, his grave sucking method involved taking something from the grave. Apostle Selman narrates how he got anointing from Cobus. I am a product of many anointings. I am a product of many encounters. But apart from having the so-called encounters with the generals of faith, Selman dropped another strange source of his anointing that he got from Prophet Cobus Van Rensburg. Why is it strange? Well, although he called it spiritual hunger, it is more of necromancy than spiritual hunger. It is a foreign practice in God's kingdom. According to Selman, Prophet Cobus and his friends went to the grave of William Branham 
and fell under the anointing before Kobu started anything even before the pastor's conference started he called me out by prophecy and he looked at me and he said i see you being like paul you will be a, a custodian of deep revelations of the kingdom all through the pastor's conference he laid hands on me again and he taught a teaching oh god kobu taught something about the fathers of old let me tell you how mad that man was he went round a tour him and his friend right they went to maybe they will say this is the pulpit that maybe alexander the way used and you carry a handkerchief and clean it lord there is an anointing on it and he took it and threw it inside anointing oil they went to the grave of william branham they said when they got to the grave two of them fell on the floor under the anointing wondering what to do cobus cut the grass close to the grave and put it inside the anointing oil they fell and he said what will i do now he cut the grass close to the side of the grave and he dumped it inside the anointing oil it's not witchcraft it's hunger separate witchcraft from hunger separate human worship he did all manner of mixture and brought the concoction of that oil to the pastor's meeting in which Selman was in attendance. He says that his eyes never departed from that concoction of oil all through that meeting as Cobus was preaching. Did all kinds of concoction on the anointing oil. My eyes was on that anointing oil all through the pastor's conference. Cobus laid his hands on him, gave him a prophecy, and a strange gift. And with that, he had received the anointing from Cobus and Jedid back to Nigeria. To defend this unbiblical act of grave sucking, some have quoted 2 Kings chapter 13, where the people were hurrying a man, and they suddenly spied a band of raiders, and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha, and when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. But here is the thing. Was the man or the people who came to bury him doing grave sucking like our modern day grave suckers? Of course not. They were busy burying the dead man and out of fear, they ran away after seeing the enemy approaching. No one was seeking anointing from the dead. But the question is, why do these preachers go to tap anointing from the dead, yet they can go directly to Jesus and ask him to give them their own anointing? Why do some of them, like Selman, run after the anointing of men of God instead of running after the pure anointing from Jesus? Apostle Tarkham tells us why he doesn't run after anointings of men of God and consequently the authentic way of getting anointing without grave sucking. I don't tap anointing from men of God. I don't need it. I don't know what's inside. It could be mixed with greed. It could be mixed with covetousness. I go to Jesus. I receive the anointing. Because that is where you get the pure anointing. Tell your neighbor, we don't tap anointing. We are not palm wine tappers. We go to Jesus. He's the source of the pure one. So pure. Having the energy to turn things around. If you want to carry the anointing that a dead man or woman of God carried in his or her days, there is only one authentic way of getting the anointing. That way is not grave sucking or lying on their photos. That's charismatic witchcraft. The only way is getting into the throne room and asking Jesus for your own anointing for your generation. That's how we get the pure anointing in God's kingdom. Not by running after anointed men of God, not by lying on their graves, not by lying on their photos, and not by tapping anointing from them. We have actually treated this video. Please, can you check and see it? It's on YouTube. If on YouTube, can you check? You have it on YouTube and as well on Facebook. If you are not following me on Facebook, can you follow me on Facebook, okay? At Pastors Gist with Lady P. We have treated the video. I will put it on the description, so the link on the description, so that you can watch the full video. We are Prophet Obat NJ, Prophet Joel Ogebe, Apostle John Sisuleman, J. Israel, and Apostle Michael Olobo. We are, and also Odmeje. We are they say no, that Odmeje and Oh, but NJ, he, they are wrong. Meanwhile, J. Israel said yes, that oh, but NJ has very nice gift. In terms of prophetic, prophetic gift, right? I don't know, but for me, I don't see this thing. I don't just get it. I don't even know where to start in this topic now. That a man of God will claim that God gave it to him. That he is the sharpest prophet on earth. How? 
Bible says that God gave gift to men. He gave gift to men. When he decided he gave gift to men, and those men he gave gifts, he gave them as in based on the capacity. We understand. There is no way Bible said that he gave this person is the highest prophet. For me, I see it as pride. I see it as pride. And these people that are saying I tap from mountain, mantle, mantle of a thing. We have treated that one as well. We are prophets and pastors fighting over Idahosa's mantle. Can you check it also? Okay. Apostle Aroma Sai, uh, Apostle John Suleiman, Pastor Charles, Pastor Charles Osua, Osu, Osuza, Osuza. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce the word very well. They were actually fighting over Idahusa's mantle. Who owns the mantle? Whose mantle? Who this and that? Where is the mantle? So, can you check? Okay. Now, I said it in that time. I said there's nothing like man to give in to somebody. You can see Pastor Chris has narrated this. I tap from this. We like to tap. Our problem, we, I, I, I even created my time. I'll be posting videos of men of God that God used during their time to do great work. I posted the videos so that people that are tapping can know the secret behind their greatness. None of them, but they don't want to watch this that video. Go and check now those that video. People don't watch, they don't like to watch such video. Nobody wants to know the secret. People just want solution. They don't want to see the suffering. Because those men, they will, none of them say, I tap from this, I tap from the other person's own. No. They were only talking about how they suffered, the sacrifice they paid, the sacrifice of denying themselves. I said at that time that there is nothing like this mantle of this and person, this and person, this and this Elijah collected from Elisha. That that story is not did not end. That is not what he was talking about. What suffering, as in you have to work harder before you can get somebody's double portion, double portion of of whatever anointed. It's not possible because no man can give what he don't have. How can Elijah give Elisha? Double portion of his anointing. Meanwhile, he don't have the double portion. He only have one. He can't give what he don't have. I said it there. He can't give what he don't have. He was only the last scripture was actually trying to let us know to describe to us as in the suffering. If this person walk like this, Moses to Joshua, work harder. You have to work harder than your master. Just like a father and his son. You're expecting your son to be greater than you, and that your son have to work harder than you so that he can be greater than you. So that is just it. You have to pay great sacrifice. Deny your body, your flesh. Say no to evil. Consistent. Pay the sacrifice of fasting and prayer. Pay the sacrifice of desire and hunger for Christ. If you can pay this kind of sacrifice, son, you will be greater than me. You have double portion of my anointing. If he can see me, he can see me go. If he can see me go, if he can be focused, if he can be consistent, if he can be persistent, you will have double portion of my anointing. You will be do greater than me. That is just what that scripture was trying to tell us. I explained it that time. I just want to appreciate God for Pastor Chris Oyakirobi, as well as other ministers that have spoke here. Thank you so much, Apostle Richard Akim. Now, the one of, look at the one of Pastor Ben Him. He went to go and collect this thing from graveyard. Anointing, tap anointing from graveyard. Ben Him and many of them, many of them went to graveyard to go and collect anointing. Apostle Joshua Sermon, all those things are desperation. For me, those people that went to graveyard to go and tap anointing, the one, like especially the one of Ben Him, I think that thing was ignorant. Okay, I strongly believe that now he will not do that. He won't do that now because he have understood whom Christ is and more knowledge of gospel. Okay, I strongly believe that he will not do that. But some people are doing it as a diabolical way. You go to graveyard, go to grave of somebody that died to go and collect anointing. What happened to yourself now going to go and tap? Can't you go and tap from Christ? When the person was alive, he did not give you that mantle. Now that the person is dead, he want to collect. Pastor, Prophet Uche, 
David Uche said that let TB Joshua handed over his mantle to him. So he's second. <laughs> he's TB Joshua the second. <laughs> Most later, I <laughs> I made some comment about it. Most later, the same TB Joshua was exposed of being narcotic. I said, brother, will you still collect this <laughs> TB Joshua the second? Meanwhile, according to him, Jeremiah was his, his, his father in the Lord. He was brought up by Jeremiah or Mototofi. Now, TB Joshua being the grandfather, now gave him mantle. How? So this thing, he has turned to something else. Now look at the one of Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. This one says, I want the double portion of, I want anointing. I want to tap. Brother, stop tapping. Go to Christ and tap. Apostle Richard Takin has said it all. Go and tap from Christ. So nobody is the highest prophet on earth, please. There's nothing like that. It's not done anyway, okay? So thank you guys for listening. We love you guys. Bye.